Hey, this is the first video of a playlist in which we are going to discover how to add artificial intelligence to a 3GS scene object using Yuka. That being said, in this tutorial we are going to see how to add a path following steering behavior to a mesh by re-implementing this example which you can find in the examples page on the official website of the library. Before we get into the code, let's start by demystifying some concepts and terms that we are going to use all along this in the future videos. Entities An entity is merely a somewhat intelligent component of a game. It could be a character, a car, or whatever object that we program to make it behave in a way similar to what it would do if it was in real world. Steering behaviors A steering behavior is some sort of an algorithm that we use to give an entity a lifelike motion. There are a set of different steering behaviors, but as I said, in this video we are going to focus on the path following steering behavior. With this behavior we apply a force to make an entity follow a certain path like how it would do in real life. An example of that is a car's movement in a curved trajectory like in Formula 1 racings. So we have a car that must follow a certain path but it doesn't mean that it should strictly follow it, mainly because of the physics laws which affects the car's movement. That can be also done on purpose to shorten the distance to be walked which you may do in your daily life without even you realizing it. Now, how do we implement that, you might be asking. Well, it's pretty much the same way humans work. So, as a human being you have a physical side which is your body and a metaphysical side which is your soul, your consciousness and intelligence. That said, we can apply that to the elements of our scene, so a mesh represents the body part. On the other hand, the soul or intelligence is represented by a non-visible object or a set of instructions more precisely that we eventually fusion with the mesh and the result of that is an intelligent entity. Having said that, the first part can be done by creating a mesh out of a geometry instance in a material or importing a model from a GLTF file. For the second part, we'll use an AI library which is Yuka in our case. And now time to practice what we've just learned. So first and foremost, we'll start by installing Yuka by typing the following command npm install Yuka. Next, we'll need to import it into the project. That done, let's create the mesh of our entity which is a simple cone geometry with a mesh normal material. Now we are going to create the mind part of our entity in that by creating an instance of the vehicle class. The next step we need to do is fusion the body part with the mind and that's by calling the setRenderComponent method from the vehicle instance. This method takes two arguments, the first one is the mesh and the second one is a synchronization function. Sync also needs two parameters, the first is an entity which is the vehicle instance more precisely and render component which is the mesh. Now within the body of this function we'll code the fusion part, to do that we'll use this single line. So here we are using the copy method in order to make the mesh copy all the matrix calculations needed for geometric transformations from the vehicle, like the translations, scale and rotations. In other words, we are making Yuka handle the animation of the mesh instead of 3GS. Furthermore, we are going to revoke that task completely from 3GS by setting the matrix auto update property of our vehicle mesh to false. The next step we are going to do is create the path that our entity needs to follow, and that by creating a path instance from Yuka, then we'll set the checkpoints that form the path by calling add and setting the coordinates of each point via a Yuka vector. What we are going to do now is to simply put our vehicle at the first checkpoint of our path using this line. That done, now we'll set the behavior by creating an instance of the behavior we want to achieve, which is the follow path behavior. The 
The first argument is the path, obviously, and the second one refers to the distance between the vehicle and the current checkpoint. This value tells the vehicle when it should change its direction and move to the next checkpoint, which leads to a smooth and natural looking movement. In this case, once the vehicle is close 0.5 to the current checkpoint, it will change its direction and starts moving to the next one. The next thing we are going to do is create an entity manager and add the vehicle to it. Having said that, the role of an entity manager is simply to handle updating the state of the game entities over time, and what I mean by state is the position, orientation, and overall animation of the entities. Now we'll create a time instance which is needed for the entity manager. And finally, we'll get the delta time from the time instance and pass it as an argument to the entity manager, which as I said, we'll use it to update the state of our vehicle. And there we go, we got our cone moving in a certain direction determined by a given path, which is the most essential part of the tutorial, and the next section we are going to do the optional stuff. As you can see here, our vehicle is oriented towards the wrong direction. To fix that, we are going to apply a simple rotation to the geometry forming the cone. The next thing we are going to do is display the path, since we sort of created just its presence but not physically, because as I said earlier, Yuka doesn't handle displaying stuff, that's the role of 3GS. So to create our path we need to have its checkpoints set as an array with each set of three elements representing the x, y and z coordinates of every checkpoint. To do that we are going to create an array and then fill it with data from the Yuka path using a simple for loop. Underscore waypoints here is an array of vector objects, but as I said earlier, we need the array to include float values. The next thing we need to do is create a buffer geometry instance. A buffer geometry is like a piece of clay that you can form however you'd like. In our case, we'll use it to form a geometry out of the checkpoint's coordinates in our position array. Next, we'll need this line. Set attribute adds a position property to the buffer geometry that includes the coordinates of each vertex composing the geometry. Flow32 buffer attribute essentially takes the position array and then passes its values to the GPU with a set of three elements at a time to render the vertex they form in the scene. And now that we are done with creating the geometry, we are going to link its points with lines. To do that, we need to create an instance of the line basic material, then link both the geometry and the material with an instance of the line loop class, and then add it to the scene. And there we go, we got our path. Now, in case we want to change the speed of the vehicle, which will affect its motion on the path, we are going to change the value of its max speed property. Currently, the vehicle travels from the first checkpoint, but it doesn't go back to it which means it stops at the last checkpoint. To change that and make it travel in an endless loop, we'll need to set the loop property of the path to true.
Finally, we can have more control over the behavior of the vehicle and that by using another path behavior which is under the name of on path behavior. So if we add that behavior to the steering property, the vehicle will be following the path in a more strict way because the on-path behavior has a radius property and by default its value is set to 0.1 which refers to the tolerance regarding the path following. That being said, a higher tolerance value means less strict path following. And this is it for this video, so make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.